to start, you're gonna come over to my wall and get a tray. The tray must have a blue lining, which you can pick up. They're a little sticky and you can place it inside of your tray. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get a paper towel since things get a little juicy with a frog dissection. For dissection tools, you will need one scissors, one forceps, and two probes that look like this. These are dangerous, be careful, set those down and four dissecting pins that have a little T at the end. Once you have this equipment, you may also get four gloves, two for each of you. Um, the gloves are either small or medium. I do have large uh, gloves as well for the students who need that. It's important when you get your frog that you have your gloves on, your partner has their gloves on, and only one of the two of you comes to get the frog from Miss Stein. Once you come up to me, I will check that you have the right equipment and that you have your gloves on and that your partner is still at the seat. Then I'll give you your frog, which I rinsed off a lot of the chemical to help with the smell. And you will put it here and go back to your seat. Go ahead and pause now. So during the lab, you'll have this lab out and you're going to go at the pace that you and your partner can go at, but you will need to move quickly. Um, to start, now that you have your frog and you have this lab out, we are going to do a few things. Um, we're going to place the frog on its belly or its ventral side in the dissecting pan. We're going to look at the hind legs and the front legs, describing the differences between the two. We're going to look at the eyes. Frogs have three eyelids, and the two outer ones camouflage with the frog's body, and they don't actually move. It's the third eyelid that actually helps the frog, allowing it to see underwater. So frogs basically have built-in goggles. Behind the eye, you're going to locate the tympanic membrane, which is another word for the eardrum. It's flat on the side of the face of the frog and then you'll be able to see the nasal cavity of the frog, the external nares of the frog. Feel free to feel the skin, it should be smooth. Remember that a toad has bumpy skin. So when I look at this frog, the belly is much lighter than the back. Um, you should be able to see its eye. This is the tympanic membrane I was talking about. That is basically where they hear, that is their eardrum the front legs, the muscular back legs, and then this has been cut for you on purpose, and this is going to help you when we open it up to see what's inside. Once you've looked at the outside of your frog, make sure you've answered this question, this question, this question, and labeled your frog. So it says place the frog on its back and you're gonna pry open the mouth. You're gonna locate the tongue and tell me where the tongue is attached. Our tongue is attached in the back of the mouth and the back of your throat. I'm asking you to look, is the frog's the same as us or is it attached in the front allowing it to roll out and then roll back in? Uh, you are going to feel the ridges that are the teeth that a frog has. And if you open the mouth really wide, uh, you will see two little tubes that lead um, to the tympanic membrane, and that's your eustachian tube. Humans have the same thing. It's what pops the air inside of this tube pops when you're going up and down a mountain. That tube is attached from your throat to your ear, and we're going to see that with the frog. So I'm going to show you how to use your probe to find that eustachian tube and find out um, where it goes. When I look at the frog, like they said, open the mouth up. You can put your finger in there and feel the ridges, the little teeth. 
Um, I know this is kind of horrible, but you actually have to really open the mouth up pretty wide to be able to see the tubes in the back. You can see the tongue. You can see where it attaches. If you'd like to, you can take the tongue out. If you are holding the frog, you are the one cutting. There's no teamwork when holding the frog. So you can just pull the tongue out. You can pull it out, you can cut it out, but it is in fact attached at the front. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is look to see if we can see the eustachian tubes inside of the mouth. So when you look inside the frog's mouth, you can see um, where the food would be swallowed. But in the corner, you're gonna find a tiny, tiny, tiny little opening. It is right kind of at the top in the back, right there. That is the eustachian tube. And if you push your probe in it, it immediately pops out of the tympanic membrane. You don't even have to push hard because it's a tube. So you have that same tube. It's on both sides. And it goes to your ear. Ooh. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to open up the inner parts of the frog. This is to help you get started. When you cut, you're going to always want to angle your scissors when you're cutting upward. So if you don't, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm angling them upward. If you cut straight down like this, you'll end up cutting the organs. There's two layers that we're going to remove, and the first is just skin. You can see that it's a thin layer, like that. The second layer is muscle, and we're going to be cutting that. I can already see the post cable vein right here. When you dissect this frog, you'll be able to see that really well. So I'm going to start going down the frog. And when I put my scissors in, again, I am going to angle upward as I cut. Don't angle down. Angle up. Welcome to hold the frog as you cut. I'm angling up the entire time. I can immediately see fat bodies and the liver. I cut some of this, I cut the post cable vein, but you can see it along the belly of the frog. So I'm gonna cut sideways. All of this is fat body. That's probably gonna be the first thing I have you remove, which is a little disgusting, um, but you just need to get rid of all of it because you don't need it. Make so, sure you don't get rid of that, that's important, which you can tell that it looks different than the fat bodies. The fat bodies are yellowish and they just pull right out. I am going to trim off this so I don't have to deal with it anymore. I'm also going to try to pin this down now that I've got the bulk of this frog open. The reason I pin this down is that this arm stops getting in my way and in a few minutes we're actually going to open up that chest cavity. just want to make sure I have all of my fat bodies out. There's still a few back here. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna look at is this three-lobed thing. This is the liver. We labeled that on our diagram um, here, which is kind of what where we're at now. We are gonna lift it up, and we're gonna be looking for this little ball under here. This is a little sac. It's even poppable. 
It's the gallbladder, and inside of it is a chemical called bile. And you make bile. You've probably seen bile if you throw up for long enough and there's no food left. Sometimes the only thing you have in there to throw up is bile. And bile helps break fat down or break fat into from big circles of oil to tiny circles of oil. Emulsify fat. So we're going to see that. Pancreas is a little hard to see. I'll see if I can find it. If you would like, at any time, you can grab some of these white paper towels that are in the red bin. And I actually like dab some of the fluid out so that it's not as hard to see everything. You can also throw away the fat bodies. So with the liver, I'm looking for the three lobes. The liver is humongous. One, two, three. I'm going to lift it up and see if I can find the little ball, which is right here. This little bag, it's flat for me. Yours might be full of fluid, is the gallbladder. It's a little, like it looks like a squish, like a raisin. And I actually can pop that. Okay. You are then going to grab the lobes of the liver and just pull it out. One, two, three, as well as the gallbladder itself, which is that little bag that's left over. We don't need that either. I'm gonna pull this all out. Being careful not to accidentally remove the intestines and the stomach. The liver is really smooth, so you can tell if you're pulling liver out or not. Above it, I can see the heart hidden by the chest cavity so we're going to look at that next. There's a lot of connective tissue holding all the stuff together, all the organs together. You can trim connective tissue which will help you see all of the different parts. A lot of them have blood vessels in it. So for this part this is probably um, this takes a little bit of aggression. You're gonna go above the heart. I hold the heart down with my finger so that I can cut here. And you have to cut pretty hard. You're gonna hear a tiny bit of a crunch, but that's okay. I grab this and pull it open. And again, you can cut some of the side connective tissue. And there's a few cool things to see up here. First of all, I can see the heart. On some frogs, it's clearer than others. If I cut a little of this connective tissue out, I can see the V at the top of the heart. That is the conus truncus arteriosus. My larynx, I just accidentally cut in half. That was the larynx right there, but I cut it in half. All right, so the heart itself, I'm gonna cut this little blood vessel, cut that little blood vessel, so glad we learned conus truncus arteriosus. And you can take the heart itself and take it out. On either side of it are the two lungs. Lung, lung. Feel the lungs, they're squishy. And that's because they're lungs. The heart itself, see the conus truncus arteriosus? Amphibians have a three-chambered heart. We have two atria at the top, and the bottom is the ventricle, which just pumps blood, and you can see that it opens up. That's the ventricle. Okay. And again, the pink stuff is not actually blood. It's just plastic. It's latex that got injected into the frog. You can take out the two lungs if you'd like. So now I've got a stomach, and this stomach is attached to where the mouth was. Like if I go through here, I could, it would end up right here. So this is where the food would go, and then the small intestine, and this little jelly bean. The jelly bean is the spleen. This tissue you can cut. So all these tiny little. Um, that's probably the pancreas right there. It's 
it's really hard to see. I don't mind if you don't get the pancreas, that's okay. The intestines, cutting this connective tissue is going to be really important. It looks like plastic in between these layers. So one of the two of you can start removing some of that. This takes a few seconds. Be careful when you do this. And if you're careful, you'll be able to unravel the small intestine to see just how long it actually is. You can see that the small intestine is probably 12 inches long. It goes on for quite a while. I can see my spleen. I can keep cutting this plasticky connective tissue so I can see things even better. I'm gonna cut this off of that. I'm gonna remove my spleen. Set it over here. Okay, that's the leftovers of the pancreas. So now I've got stomach, small intestine forever. That's the large intestine this very bottom part. And the cool thing about a stomach, if I go to the very, very top and cut it, this is like one big tube. And the stomach, if you look in the stomach, has lots of rings. So you might wanna like try to see if there's anything inside of it. We have had frogs that have had bugs inside the stomach. Some are more um, full than others. If this grosses you out, I wouldn't look at this part because I'm squeezing stuff out of the stomach that this frog ate. Look at that. I'm gonna cut the stomach here as well so it's no longer attached. And I am going to cut the stomach open. Again, if you have a frog that ate recently, you might see some food in there, some digested bug. And if you open it up, you can see all the little um, flaps in your stomach that allow for your stomach to expand. So when the frog is full, all those little flaps are gone and it'll pull out and get like a really like basically inflated balloon. The small intestine has the same thing inside. Lots and lots and lots of little flaps in there, little folds for food to get absorbed. So most food gets absorbed in the small intestine and you can see even though it's really long, there's a lot of places for food to get absorbed. And then finally the large intestine, which I'm cutting that out. I removed it from the small intestine. Large intestine is where water gets reabsorbed. And I'm sure you can figure out what's inside of there and we'll just put that aside. This is a male frog. These two giant blue things are the kidneys and they're super full of um, vascular tissue, veins and arteries, because they clean out your blood. That's what your kidneys do. Hopefully you can figure out that these two tiny things are the kidneys from our picture that we did. We're now right here. The yellow stuff would be the kidneys on our picture and the green little dots are the testes. Adrenal glands are on the side of the kidneys. And on our frog, if I cut again the connective tissue I can't really see it, but that is where it is. So if you'd like, you can cut the kidneys out, and the testes, sorry frog, and you can see that this is a vertebrate. There's the backbone and the individual vertebrae. If you would like, you can actually bend this, or sometimes it, you can just cut it. Yeah. And when you cut it, which is, you can see inside of the spinal, um, the vertebrae, and you can actually see the spinal cord inside, which is kind of a light gray color in here. And that's something that, of, of course, as a human, you wouldn't want to snap that because it does not heal. And I'm not talking about the bone surrounding it. I'm talking about the um, nervous tissue that runs down your bones. And that's it. So now for cleanup. You're going to head back over to my wall. When you head over here, you are going to place your dirty dissection equipment on this blue tray, scissors, um, the 
forceps, which you may or may not have used when you're dissecting pins. And the rest of the stuff on the tray should be your frog and the parts. So you will walk this all the way out to the back door where you will throw all the parts in this bag for um, me to dispose of it. Do not throw the blue pad in to this trash can. So I just go like that and like that. You should have nothing in here. From here, you still have your gloves on. You can come back to the sink and you have a couple things to do here. But first, let's throw away our gloves. This is how you do gloves. I take For our dissection, you guys are going to be taking dish soap, the sponge, and you're gonna scrub the tray and the blue pad. So to clean your tray, you will take out the blue pad and um, using soap and a sponge or a scrubber, you will scrub this. And you can do this at any one of my four sinks. These blue pads, once you get the water off of them, I'd like you to hang these um, at the sink that is closest to my back room. So you'll see a bunch of them there and you just hang it right over the side of the sink like that. Do that. The tray itself, scrub it out, make sure there's nothing gross in it. Rinse it out. And then set it down next to the other trays and then you're putting them at right angles to each other so that they are not um, like overlapping each other like that. Wash your own hands with soap and water. And you may go sit down and answer the lab questions now that your hands are clean.